one of the greatest gifts God has given us as a follower of Christ is one that has received his love is that now we can come in a relationship with God in everyday ways, vertically engage our God and listen and be loved. Welcome to the One Cry Podcast, a nationwide call for spiritual awakening. The goal, accelerating the movement of God through sharing revival truth, stories, and reports. Welcome once again to the One Cry Podcast. I'm Bill Elif, and my dear friend Kyle Reno is is with me today. And uh, we are so thrilled that we're coming into your car or your house or your run or uh, at the gym. <laughs> it sounds a little wherever. creepy when you say it that way. <laughs> yeah, it, it's creepy. Uh, you know, Kyle, I had, uh, there's something about being around great men yeah. that changes us. And I know you and I have talked about this before and all, yeah. all of us have our heroes. I, I had a, a couple of weeks, really it was about a 10 day span a few weeks ago. And, uh, and in, in, in those days I was around, I was around several wonderful, great men, but three in particular. One was I, I just, because of a, a group of guys I was with, uh, we we sat in the office with Jim Symbola, the great pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Church, and he's 82 years old, and he acts like he's about 50. And I was just blown away. We sat with him for several hours, and he was sitting up on the edge of his chair just so excited about this a uh, new outreach they were going to have to try to reach uh, a Hispanic portion and the, the immigrants that were coming into New York. And then in the same breath, he's talking about this homeless guy across the street that he's befriended and led to Christ. And, and I just thought, man, the, the vigor, the vision of this guy at 82. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then a little later we had lunch in that same uh, meeting and spent several hours with Crawford Loritz. And Crawford is about my age, I think, his early 70s, maybe even younger, which is a frightening thought. And, uh, but he, he, uh, he's just, uh, I just, he was just talking. And a bunch of us were just asking him questions. The wisdom that was coming out of him mm. was just unbelievable. And then, and then a week later, I, I went to the to the great Bellevue Baptist Church in uh, Memphis, and I had the privilege of speaking over there with Steve Gaines. And Steve, right now, has uh, cancer. He's right in the middle of chemotherapy. He's got another disease that affects his muscles and makes him so tired. And and we sat at dinner. And Kyle, you you know Steve really well. Yeah. He really discipled you, and and he is he is leaning up against the wall to try to keep his head up, and we are laughing so hard. <laughs> yeah, it's great. And 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 he is so happy, so right. joyful. Wow, so full of God. Hmm. Well, and I, the whole point of me telling you this that was a good ten days. Yeah. But being in the presence of those three men affected me. Yeah, I'll, I'll never be the same. I mean, just I mean, I've been around them before, but it mm-hmm. there's something about all three of them together. Mm-hmm. I could just, I if we had time, I could just tell you the particular things I saw mm-hmm. in them and how it changed me and thought, man, I want to be like that. Yeah, I, I want to be like that. And the beautiful thing that we're going to see today, Kyle, is we can be in the presence of God Mm -hmm. all the Mm -hmm. time and Mm -hmm. be around God and look at God. Right. And that's the point of this little series that we're doing on, on looking up and getting our vision in that direction. And boy, we need it. Don't we Kyle? Yeah, man. Well, that's the perfect way to set this up (laughs) because the truth is about all three of those men is, is not a microwave is that they've Mm -hmm. learned to live vertically over decades of life and yeah. God's life is just permeated their lives. Like right. they, it, you just get around them and you think about him. You think about the Lord 
and you see. And so last week we kick started and said, hey, what would it look like for us to be a people that have better posture? People mm-hmm. that learn how to position ourselves in the presence of God, not living on the horizontal. And just to declare again, listen, this world is demanding your attention. And, right. and our nation right now is fighting for your mind, fighting for your heart. And so it's going to take some spiritual courage to fight for your eyes, to wow. fight for your sight line. And so I, I just, last week we looked at real quick, our God is the creator. So look up, look up people of God today. When you walk into those times with the Lord, when you get in the car and you're riding down the road and remember that our God has created everything we've seen and all the unseen. And that same God is in control and it's that he is watching over. And while the nations plot, they plot in vain Mm because our God is sovereign control and that should bring great comfort to us in every aspect of our life. And then the last point last week was then our God is holy and we should rightly tremble in his presence. Like there's something about getting under the right weight of God and feeling in his transcendence that he is altogether other. Mm-hmm. And and I, it's married to this. I'm going to give you just a couple truths to help you and I learn how to live vertically. And that same God in his word, when he gives a one word definition of himself, our God is love, mm. is love. I, I just got captured by this thought. When God wanted to give a one word definition of himself, he said, love. Mm-hmm. Now you, you listen to what it says in First John 4, 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Bill, I've heard you say this in innumerable, time, innumerable, innumerable times. A.W. Tozer's quote, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. And so I, I, a lot of us lose a vertical mindset in our approach to God because we don't think about a God that is love. Maybe we've had a painful past and authority figure in our life that sort of skewed our view of God. Maybe it was a bad dad or a father wound or maybe it's some religious person leadership in your life that sort of tainted the way that you see God. Maybe you see him as a harsh football coach is screaming at you all the time or a dictator. Well, that's not the God of the Bible. Look up. The God of the Bible is love. Zephaniah 317 says, the Lord your God is in your midst. I love that thought. He's He's here. The Lord your God is in your midst. He's, he's close. A mighty one who will save. If you're in the family of God, that's because our God is a savior. He will rejoice over you with gladness. I'll, I'll Man, when the Lord sees you coming, he rejoices over you with gladness. Like when you come to get into a posture and a position before God, he goes, that's my boy. That's my girl. Look at him coming. I rejoice. I, I love this about him. I love this about her. And it says he will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. Bill raised a bunch of babies. And I should say Holly did for him. Katie is still raising kiddos for us. Between us, we got a tribe of, of children. I love what it says. He'll quiet you by his love. It makes me think of somebody holding a little baby that's crying and it's just going, shh, 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 shh. Like the, the Lord loves to hold his kids when we live vertically and just say, it's going to be okay. To just quiet you with his love, he will exult over you with singing. Like you know that God, if you want to live vertically, that God just doesn't see you, that God sings over you, <laughs> mm. that he's singing a song over you. I remember years ago there was a song, you've never heard of it, I'm sure, uh, it, it, because it wasn't necessarily for the world, it was for one person, but it it, it got recorded and that, it just moved me greatly. It's called The Promise by Mercy Me. And the song was written as they were setting up on the stage and and the stage hands were getting everything pre-concert and he saw this guy that just looked broke down and wounded and angry and and he was just one of the guys that was working this event 
And all of a sudden, out of his heart came a song that he felt like God was wanting to just sing over him. So for his sound check, he just started singing over this guy, I love you. This is the Lord. I will never leave you nor forsake you because I love you. And, and, and he watched the demeanor of that guy change till that guy was just looking at him and then le- ended this with a conversation about God's great love for this guy. All that to say, God's singing over you today. Mm. Look, look up. He's singing over you. You're not coming to a, a dad that's scolding or screaming. You're coming to a dad that is singing, <laughs> that is singing over you. He doesn't just say it. He shows it. Romans 5, 8 says, but God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God doesn't just say it or sing it. He displayed it. He showed it and that his son came for us. I love Tim Keller's quote. You are more sinful than you could ever dare imagine. That's Our God is holy. When you get in his presence, we realize, oh, wow, we are sinful, man. That's not the end of the quote, though. We're more sinful than we dare imagine. And and you are more loved and accepted than you ever dare hope at the same time. That you're more sinful than you imagine. And yet at the same time, you're more accepted and loved than you ever dare hope. Simultaneous truth. Our God is holy and our God is love, lends itself to this as you look up to remember. And our God, he came for us. He came for us. That the gospel message is this. It's not that we made our way up the mountain to God. Not that we figured out some way to understand or save ourselves, but that our God came for us. And this is the love of God. First John 4, 9 and 10. God made Manif- was made manifest among us, talking about presence, so it was displayed, made manifest among us, that God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be a propitiation for our sins. One of the greatest gifts God has given us as a follower of Christ is one that has received his love, is that now we can come in a relationship with God in everyday ways, vertically engage our God, and listen, and be loved. Be loved by God. Here's the thing that no human has ever done, and you won't either, I won't. You'll never love God first. Never. He he is displayed in that he came after us when we couldn't come for him. So the best that we can do is respond. And living vertically is a right response to God's work for us. I'm going to give you two more things real quick. Our God also cares about us. He not only saves us, but he actually engages in a relationship where he cares for us. If you want to live vertically, one of the greatest things you and I can learn to do as we walk with God and learn to commune is to realize that God actually cares about our life. I, I remember the first time I heard a guy say to me, a mentor in my life, he goes, Kyle, God not only loves you, he likes you. And he 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 not he not only cared enough to save you, he he cared enough to stay with you. Like he, he that God wants to be intimately involved in our lives. Listen to what first Peter five seven says, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. One of the awesome privileges of being a people that live vertically is that you get to carry into God's presence the things that you need to cast. And if you'll cast it on him, that's freedom for you. I love Luke 12, 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. To look up today and know that, you know what, this God that is loved, this God that came for us is actually a God that cares for us. He cares for you today. Somebody needs to hear this. Some person on this podcast needs to hear this today. God cares about what you're carrying. He cares. You got a decision to make. You can either keep carrying it or you can cast it. You can cast it. Hear me. Because, listen, Jesus has broad enough shoulders to carry it. So don't don't carry it alone. Look up. The last thing I'll tell you, just to encourage you about living vertically, 
and I love this. You see this across the New Testament, specifically in Acts, Bill. I know we've talked about this conversation before. In light of a God that loves us, that came for came for us, that cares for us, and our God is coming back for us. He's coming back for us. One of my favorite, most mysterious passages in the Bible is Matthew 24, verses 30 and 31. It says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. You say, Kyle, what does that look like? No idea. Can't <laughs> wait to see it. <laughs> no idea. I, I don't believe it's the bat sign in the sky, but I think it's something that appears in the heavens that instantly everyone's going to know. Everybody's going to know Jesus is the true king. He is the true king. It says, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. That there's a moment coming, and this is why we should live vertically, that not only he came for us, live perfectly, die sacrificially, defeat death in his resurrection to ascend to the right hand of the Father. But one day, listen to me, sky's going to part. King's going to come. King's going to come. And you look at those first followers of Christ, Bill, right after the other side of the empowering of the Holy Spirit out to fulfill the mission of God, they were always eagerly awaiting the day of the Lord. Mm-hmm. That that we listen to me. We, as God's people on this planet, should not be as concerned about what the polls say. What's next in our nation? We should rightly engage, be a part of those things as a people whose eyes are set on the sun that will one day come again for. His kids. If you, if we become those kind of people, you'll live more free and empowered than you ever dare ask or imagine. So, Bill, I know you probably fired up, ready to preach back. Oh my and- stars! <laughs> I, I I almost broke in with the Bill Gaither song, "The King is Coming." Coming, he's coming, which nobody even knows yeah. anymore, except unless you're over like a hundred years old. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but this is so rich. You know, I was just thinking. Uh, Kyle, this thing of living vertically, and 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 when you get there, yeah, you know the the, the psalmist said the nearness of God is my good. That's right. This is good for me, and mm-hmm. and when you get there, you just see things that you you don't see anywhere else. So the, right. I mean, the world is making you see stuff all the time. Right. You're, you're walking through this world. You you're going to see that junk, but unless you live vertically, unless right. you look up. And there's a way to do that. Uh, mm. You you don't see this, and I think particularly about these uh, things that you are talking about about the mm. the love of God, the care of God for us, and mm. He He showed that care by by coming and then coming again. Amen. I I think the perhaps the greatest. Uh, tool the enemy has in his arsenal is to tell us that God, God doesn't love us. Yeah. Right. And and he's got a lot of ammo because mm-hmm. it look, we know that God is sovereign mm-hmm. and he's over the world. And yet the world is a mess in so many ways. Right. And so he just, all he does is he just whispers said, God, I love you. Mm-hmm. He didn't care about mm-hmm. you. He's a million miles away. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, I think there's some things in life, you know, uh, Kyle, you know, in sports, that sometimes if if an area is deficient, yeah. you got to almost overcorrect. Exactly. You know, right. you, you got to work ten times harder to get right. uh, your legs. If your legs are weak, uh, you got to work way harder to get those legs in shape. Right. And and you got to overcorrect. I, I think we need an overcorrection. Wow. Of the love of God. Right. And uh, and and when we get there, yeah. that settles everything. Sure. Right? You know, what, what do you think, Kyle? I was just yeah. thinking as you were talking about uh, the things mm-hmm. that happen to us when we don't realize mm-hmm. that God loves us. Mm-hmm. 
you know, like insecurity. We get we yeah. get terribly insecure. We're fearful. Yeah. Right. Right. You know, so many areas. Yeah, I th- I think you're a hundred percent agree. If if the enemy can deceive us about God's heart for us, then we right. won't trust what he says. We won't we won't right. trust what's to come. You know, but I, I think you I mean you think about love. Uh, love is not just merely an emotion, you know, no. like it, it, it l- love is a reality, you know, like yeah. it, it's a fact it, it's, you know, Holly loves you, not merely yeah. because she says it because she's displayed it in faithfulness right. over time. And how, and I, I think one of the things about living vertically is, is that, is there moments that you will feel loved by God? 100%. You know, there's moments where you're like, man, I, I I sense the nearness of God, the presence of God. But I, I think as you learn to live vertically, you come to a place that you know you are loved. Right. <laughs> like, right. Because God said it. It's done. Because, yeah, yeah, it's done because it's and that's a confidence that you, know, you walk into the world in, in a world that is that is trying to pump you full of things that will say, well, this is what love is. You know, this is what yeah. this is what this is your value. Should displays your like no i am i am fully loved though yeah. i am completely flawed i'm still fully loved right. and, and now I, that the confidence that comes with that it, there's no substitute for it you know i i years ago i taught through um first corinthians 13 on the love of god and and i have forever since then seen god's love as like this, that God quality mm. that always responds in self-sacrifice. Mm. The, the opposite of love is not hatred. The opposite of love, you see it in First Corinthians mm. thirteen, is unselfishness. Oh wow! You know, love right in the middle. You know, he says he he takes love like a prism and he turns it in the light. And he says, "Now love." And he's talking about that God quality, agape love. Mm-hmm. It is always patient. It's always mm. kind. Some guy says, well, mm. I, I love my wife. I'm just not kind. No, you don't. Mm. You don't love her because love is kind. Right. To the extent that you're not kind, you're not loving her. Right. And patient. And mm. then it says right at the heart of that love seeks not its own. Wow. You say it's on what? It's own way. It's own time. Mm-hmm. It's own rights. Mm-hmm. It's, it's completely selfless. Wow. And that's what God is. And when you, like you say, not only when we feel that singing a mm. wonderful worship song and, right, right. and we get all emotional about it, that's one right. thing. Right. But then when you walk with God year mm-hmm. after year after mm. year, you will see that he always chooses you mm. and he always gives first to you. And mm-hmm. and you just relax in his love. I, I have to tell you this. I was, I was with, uh, my oldest daughter and her family this weekend. Mm-hmm. And and Jennifer is just a mama. I mean, she <laughs> is Jesus, all she's ever wanted to do. Right. And uh and the Lord has has taken her through some really uh tough things. She lost uh our our uh, a ten year old son to cancer. Mm-hmm. And it's created this heart in her that was always there, but just the love of God. Well they foster kids now mm. and just one after another. And I watched her this weekend. We were together all weekend and she got this little foster child who's mm. really been through some abuse uh, mm. and just a tough time. And, and I want to take that child, you know, mm. and he will scream his head off and then somebody else take him, you know, scream his head off. And he is looking for for Jennifer, and he mm. sees her, and and in two seconds, the crying stops, mm. a big old smile comes on his, because he just knows mm. he's loved. Amen. And the reason is, she's been the one in the last days that's cared for him, that's held mm. him, that's mm. sung mm. over him, like you talked mm. about, mm. and uh, and he knows he's loved. Mm. He knows mm. it's good right there. And that's what happens when that little boy is living vertically. That's right. With, with his foster mom. Yeah. That's what he's and looking for. That's mm-hmm. what he's looking for. And that's what mm-hmm. all of us are looking for. Hardwired. Hardwired. Mm-hmm. And that's why we need to live vertically. 
Not sure. So, Kyle, I, I think I wonder if we could take a minute mm-hmm. as we pray. And I wonder if you just mm-hmm. would pray for us. Mm-hmm. Because I just I just think that this is such a deficiency mm-hmm. that that we have we have believed the horizontal lie mm-hmm. of the enemy and the mm-hmm. lie that's coming from the pit. That's right. That uh, the Lord doesn't love us. Mm-hmm. Would you take us there and pray, particularly for those who are listening? Yeah, they that that God would uh, bring mm-hmm. this home to them today. Mm-hmm. Would you just pray yep. for us and we invite yep. everybody to join us as we pray. Yep. Yeah, just even where you are, even if you're riding down the road, eyes wide open, uh, or whatever place you find yourself, would you turn your heart toward Him? Just turn your heart toward the Lord, even now. Lord, I, I ask as we get before you, and I pray specifically for our listeners today, then a that in a tangible supernatural way would you let each one of your children know how much you love them that in spite of us you loved us first that lord we never had to earn it that you decided to give it that it was displayed perfectly through the sacrifice of your son that you choose to love us. So I pray that the love of God would destroy every deception in any listener's heart today. Mm-hmm. I pray that your love of God would be like a, I think about a IV line that sometimes has to be flushed. Would, mm-hmm. would your love come and flush the arteries of our heart, mm-hmm. our mind of anything any deception, any scheme, anything that we've just picked up over time, Lord, I, I pray for any vantage point or view of God that has been contorted or deformed because of somebody in our lives. That's right. That's right. I ask in the authority of Jesus, mm. would you lift our eyes beyond that which is flesh That's and right. blood? to your perfect face. <laughs> and Lord, uh-huh. just even in my heart now, would you let us hear you singing over us? Uh-huh. Would you just would you let the listener today that you're that you always are when we hear it or not. But I ask Lord, would you let us hear from the hallways of heaven the uh-huh. voice of the Father. Uh-huh. That is perfect in his love for us and i pray it set us free so i pray for a season that lord that is displayed love and that was something known but in you coming for us and that you're coming back so lord we love you we entrust all these things to you in jesus name amen amen so beautiful come on hey i have a i have a little bit of homework for our guys I like okay it. Yeah. So uh, we got one more, at least one more podcast on this living vertically yeah. uh, truth. And and as we talk about the love of God, I want to encourage you to go online, okay, and look up a sermon by Charles Spur- Spurgeon. Come it's on. called Heaven, a World of Love. You can you can just get a PDF of it. You can also get it in a little book. Uh, you know, a lot of places sell that. But I read that that sermon at least once a year. Wow. It, I, 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 for me, of course, I love Spurgeon, and, you, you know, the wording is a little archaic. But, uh, oh, my, he'll take you right there <laughs> because he walks us into heaven yeah. and describes what it's like to live in a place that is filled with the perfect love of God. Wow. Now you, you just, I, I'll just leave it right there. I just want yeah, to homework. You know, that's your homework. And I promise you, you will, you will write me a letter and you'll say, <laughs> Oh, Bill, thank you yeah, come on. for that. That's awesome. And uh, that's awesome. heaven, a world of love world by of Charles world. Spurgeon. And then tune in next time, because next time uh, we're going to talk about, not just the attributes of God that yeah. 
that we see as we as we're but we're going to talk about practically how do we look up how do we mm. live vertically 24 mm. 7. that's right and uh, i don't think you'll want to miss it invite somebody to join you and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you on our one cry podcast thanks for joining us